welcome back to episode two of How Food Is Made. Today we're at Jason's Sourdough and we're heading over to the bakery now to see how Jason's Sourdough is made. Let's go. While I get my cute shoes on to head inside the bakery, let's go back in time for a sec. Although the business has evolved over time, the first bakery from the Geary family was opened by Charles Geary in 1906. Now Jason, his great-grandson, has taken over as a fourth-generation master baker. I met with Joe, the head baker at their bakery near Leicester, to see how the sourdough is made. We start off at the spiral mixers, which are like giant stand mixers combining flour, water, salt, and the sourdough starter that the team has fermented. Their sourdough culture is fed with flour and water at the same time intervals every day to maintain consistent fermentation. Once fully mixed, the dough needs to rest at the right temperature to allow the sourdough cultures and natural wild yeast to start feeding on the nutrients in the flour. As they feed, they produce CO2 and acidic compounds which give the bread its lovely texture and flavor. Then it's left to rest. This resting time is known as the bulk fermentation time. After the bulk fermentation time, the dough is portioned out gently into the correct sizes and weights for the different bread loaves. So you can feel the difference between this it's sticking to my hands quite a lot. There's yeah. no strength or strength to it. And that's smooth. And this. And not sticky. Yeah. So what you've done is, all these little strands of gluten that you can see in here, we've added tension to that and created a shape that is going to hold its shape over the final proof time. The dough is weighed by hand by the bakers and then gently shaped on their conical rounders, which mimic the results you would get from hand molding the dough. Now, the dough needs to be proofed in order to get to the right size and texture for baking. It was pretty warm and humid, so I couldn't get any clips of the proofing cabinet, but the temperature and humidity are there so that the wild yeasts and lactobacillus culture from the sourdough culture can thrive and produce enough CO2 to leaven the bread. Once the dough is fully Fully proofed, it's removed from the proofer, and any decorations such as cuts are added by hand. Now, the part I had been so excited for, baking. I have never seen such a large oven before, and this one puts through multiple loaves at a time. These ovens are called traveling ovens or tunnel ovens, and if you look through, you can see all the way to the other side. When the loaves are fully baked, they are removed from the oven by hand and checked for size, color, and temperature to ensure that the bread is fully baked. You've got all the little fermentation spots. This can only come from long fermentation. You can't like shortcut that. The sourdough is cooled on freestanding cooling racks for three to four hours to ensure it's at ambient temperature before it gets sliced and placed into bags with labels. Each label is stuck on by hand, and I was so impressed with the speed that they stuck all the stickers on. Here at Jason's, they also check the weight before the loaves are packed into baskets and sent out to customers, and everything also goes through a metal detector, just in case, before it leaves the bakery. So now that we've waved off the loaves as they head to their final destination, let's go pick up a loaf from the supermarket so we can create something delicious at home in my kitchen. Salty, it's crunchy, it's got onion, a little horseradish, mustard, mayo. Mm. 
I honestly could just eat this probably. <laughs> It's really good. We're at home now and we are about halfway through making this brisket sandwich, which is gonna be a toasty. It's gonna be melty and we're gonna put it on the George Foreman. It's gonna be so good, I'm so excited. I've been obsessed with these kind of like pickly, oniony, meaty <laughs> sandwiches lately. And we're gonna be using the Jason sourdough. This is their white chia ba tin. And it's basically made in a tin. You will have seen that earlier, which is really cool. And from the tin, it goes through that oven, comes through, gets packaged. We saw it all happening. It's great. I actually have the whole meal here with me, which is what we actually saw being put in the packages. You'll see the green packaging if you rewind back to this video, which is really cool to see. I mean, I even saw the people who were packaging it up. They also make, what I wanted to share, is these half loaves, which are from a big bowl. And these bowls are baked as one big sourdough bread. And then they're put through um, the slicer, they're halved and packaged up. So you get this really nice half loaf. And this is the same as this, the colors are the same. This is called the Great White, and this is the whole meal. And certain ones of Jason Sourdough are sold at certain stores. So I will put that all in the description too, just in case you're curious. And yeah, let's keep going and finish this up because I'm hungry and I'm ready to have this for lunch. <laughs> so crunchy and I'm just so excited. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Okay, anyway, before I get carried away, let's enjoy. I can't say this isn't a messy sandwich to eat, but oh my God, so good. The bread is so crunchy and delicious. I didn't even put butter or mayo on like I would with another loaf of bread. It just, mm, it just is perfect the way it is. I hope you enjoyed coming with me to Jason's sourdough to see how sourdough is made. It's been so interesting to see how bread is made on a larger scale and how Jason's sourdough has done this without sacrificing quality. The sandwich we made together was so delicious and I can't wait for more cooking in my kitchen. I'll see you soon for another episode of How Food Is Made where we'll be learning to make whole grain mustard. <laughs>